We want to see your library hands. Can everybody do them? All right, we're going to practice our thumbs up and thumbs down if you can do it. And then if you don't want to be on camera, you can also tell us in the chat. Thumbs up, thumbs down, yes, no, library hands, whatever you want to say. Okay, so welcome. We are excited to see you again. Um, this week is Water Tales. So we'll be sharing tales that are underwater. And which, you can see. Which you can are. see. We are in the ocean, apparently, here on our camera. And then Olivia and Miss Leslie got stuck in the office. So <laughs> in case you don't know, um, this is the South Charleston Public Library Youth Services team. Uh, Miss Denise cannot be with us tonight, but I'm Miss Toby. And I'm Miss Annette. And I'm then Miss I'm Miss Leslie. All right. So uh, Miss Olivia is going to get us started with our welcome song. So everybody sing along if you know the words. And all right. If you're ready for a story, come sit down. If you're ready for a story, come sit down. Let's all gather near so everyone can hear. If you're ready for a story, come sit down. Woo! All right, good job, you guys. So if anyone's ever heard the phrase water, water everywhere, um, have you guys ever heard that? No? Okay, well, it's from a really, really old poem, but we won't get into that right now. Um, <laughs> But it is everywhere <laughs> in lakes, ponds, rivers, streams, oceans, and occasionally in mud puddles. In fact, 71% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. That's a whole lot. And also a little over 70% of you is water. That's crazy, right? Yes. All right. So um, <laughs> this evening, we're going to share a book about life in a pond and a book about animals that live in the ocean, which you can see some of here. And I bet you guys have seen some pond or ocean animals in your lives as well. So our first book is read to us by Miss Denise, even though she can't be here tonight. She's going to read with us tonight. And um, it is called Tad and Dad. And before she gets started, we are going to remind you that every book that we read to you or with you while we're on our programs, you can count towards your reading list. Mm -hmm. Okay, this book is called Tad and Dad, Words and Pictures by David Ezra Stein, Nancy Paulson Books, an imprint of the Penguin Group. Here we go. My dad has big buggy eyes, strong legs, and a huge mouth. I'd say he does. Look at that. He sings in a loud murr that echoes across the pond, and I love him. As soon as I could wiggle, I swam everywhere with my dad. Look at me, dad. Great swimmer, Tad. They look like they're having fun. Dad tried to tuck me in at night, but splish! I followed him to his bed. Hmm. Why are you in my bed? Said Dad. So you won't miss me, I said. I went to sleep and dreamt that I could swim as fast as Dad. Hmm. Sounds like a fun dream. And then I grew legs. Surprise, Dad! So that's what's been kicking me. Hmm. That day, I reached new heights. Look at me, Dad. Great hopping, son. Having a good time. Dad tried to tuck me in at night, but splash, I followed him to his bed. That night, I dreamt I was the best jumper in the world, like Dad. Oh, my gracious. And then I grew a big mouth, and I could sing, Good morning, Dad. It's morning already. Oh, my gracious. That day, the pond was alive with the sound of music made by me and Dad. Don't they look like they're having fun? Oh, gracious. Dad tried to tuck me in at night, but splash, it's me, Dad, I said. That night, I dreamt I could sing as loud as Dad. He has a lot of dreams, doesn't he? And then I grew really big, and I was very hungry. Hi, Dad, what's for breakfast? Oh, oh my goodness, he sat on his head. Oh, gracious. That day, we helped ourselves to a feast. Look at me, Dad. Great job, son. Dad tried to tuck me in at night, but what do you think he's going to do? Splish! Oh, my gracious. His splishes even got bigger, didn't they? 
Tad, says Dad, when you jump in my bed, I can't sleep because you're always wiggling and poking, kicking and croaking. I didn't know that, I said. Why do you want to sleep in my bed, said Dad. Are you trying to drive me bananas? I'm sorry, Dad, but don't worry. I don't want to sleep in your bed anymore anyway. You snore. Uh-oh. How can I snore when I don't even sleep, said Dad. Good night, Dad, I said. For the first time, I swam away from Dad. Ah, oh, said Dad, peace at last. I tried to go to sleep, but I heard a big hubbub. Something huge was splishing around. Frog gone it, said a loud voice. I couldn't believe my eyes. It was Dad. He was wiggling and poking, kicking and croaking. He was splashing around and making a big ruckus. I said, what's wrong? I still can't sleep. Uh-oh. I think I know what you need, Dad. A little company, I said. Is that better, Dad? Maybe better, he said. Soon Dad was fast asleep. I was right. I knew he would miss me. <laughs> All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed that story. I believe Miss Olivia has some questions for you guys. Do all righty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask some questions, and then for some of them, you'll either put a thumbs up or a thumbs down if it's a yes or no. And if you have a guess, you could type it in the chat for some of the other ones. So for the first one, do tadpoles have a tail? Yes or no? Do tadpoles have a tail? I, want, I see a lot of yeses. I see some noes. Tadpoles do have tails. All right, what do you think tadpoles eat? You can type in the chat or you could raise your hand and we can unmute you. But what do you think tadpoles eat? Let's keep them alive. I don't know. Does anybody have an answer you think you want to tell us? Anybody have a guess? You think you know? Yes, she has her hand. All right, you might have to hit your unmute button yourself. There you go. What is it? Why? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's, a good guess. That's a good guess. Tadpoles actually eat vegetation, which is a bunch of plants, and dead insects. Ew. So sometimes dead, dead flies. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do frogs have tails? That's either a yes or a no. What do you think? Do frogs have tails? I don't think so. No, they don't. Frogs don't have tails. But what do frogs eat? Do they eat the same thing as tadpoles? What do you think they eat? Oh, oh. oh. All right. I see Will and um, is it is it Gwen? Sir? Flies. Flies. <laughs> Flies. Flies is good. What about you, Waylon? Do you know what frogs eat? Oh. Flies. Uh, yeah. Do you think they eat anything else? Do you think they have something else that they might like to eat? Hmm. I don't know. I know that frogs, small frogs, like our pet mystery that we have at the library, they eat insects, mosquitoes, moths, dragonflies, and crickets. Larger frogs eat bigger insects like grasshoppers and worms. Small snakes mice, baby turtles, and even smaller frogs. What? what? I know that mystery really likes crickets. That's his favorite right yes, now. Right he doesn't now. seem to like other things very much, but maybe one day. Oh, we lost Waylon. Okay. All right. Oh, he's back. <laughs> there he goes. All right. Okay, so Miss Leslie, I believe, is going to share our Dewey Says segment with us. Let me share the screen, though, so we can all read along. Okie dokies. Dewey says that to learn more about tadpoles and frogs, you can visit the section with the number 597.8. <laughs> So when we give you all of these numbers, that means that you go to our nonfiction where it gives you true facts about all of the animals and the creatures that we talk to you about. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Uh, and then Miss Olivia is going to share our silly song with us today. If you don't remember, we always sing a song with this tune this summer in the middle of our program. So go ahead, Miss Olivia. So this is to the tune of the little green frog, but this time it's the little starfish. Wiggle, wiggle, went the little starfish. One day, wiggle, wiggle, went the little starfish. Wiggle, wiggle, went the little starfish. One day, and they all went wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. But we know they go wavy, wavy, wave. Wavy, wavy, wave. Wavy, wavy, wave. We know starfish go wavy, wavy, wave. They don't go wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <laughs> Good job, guys. All right. Our second book for today is going to be The Clumsy Crab, and I'm reading it. Um, and it is a, a Clumsy Crab. It's written and illustrated by Ruth Galloway and published by Tiger Tales. Clumsy Crab by Ruth Galloway from Tiger Tales Publishing. Nipper the crab hated his huge clumsy claws. Snip, snap, clip, clap. No matter how hard he tried, they always got in the way. They do look pretty big. I feel like they'd get in my way if I had crab claws. None of his friends had clumsy claws. He wished he had tickly tentacles like octopus and jellyfish or flippery fins like turtle and the fish. I, I, I do think the tentacles look the most fun. One day, Nipper was playing Catch the Bubble with his friends. Ooh. What do you think is going to happen? Pop! His clumsy claws burst the bubble. They couldn't play the game anymore, so they played tag instead. Instead, Nipper scuttled off sideways, but one of his clumsy claws got in the way. Oh no, what's going to happen? Whoa! Nipper slipped and stumbled and tipped and tripped and tumbled until he was buried up to his eyes in the sand. Turtle came to get, dig him out. Everyone decided to play hide and seek. Nipper climbed into a big clam shell and pulled it shut. Oh, what do you think is going to happen? Let's see. Oh, let's start get there. It was perfect hiding place until... Smash! Nipper's clumsy claws shattered the shell into hundreds of tiny pieces. Ouch! She cried. Help! Jellyfish picked up the pieces of shell. If I didn't have these clumsy claws, I wouldn't break everything and I'd be good at hide and seek, said Nipper. Don't worry, Nipper, said the others. We'll hide and you can find us. Nipper counted to ten, then set off to find his friends. He scuttled through the sand and found Turtle. He shuffled under the shells and found jellyfish. He searched up and down and in and out and all around the rocks. But he couldn't find octopus anywhere. I wonder why not. Suddenly, everyone heard her cry. Octopus was tangled up tightly in some seaweed. Help! Octopus squirmed and swiggled and wriggled and jiggled. Turtle and jellyfish tried to help, but the knots just got tighter and tighter. Nipper had an idea. What do you think he's going to do? Hmm. Nipper snipped at the seaweed with his claws. Faster and faster, Nipper danced around, danced around the clump of seaweed, snipping and snapping, clipping and clapping. His claws moved quickly, slashing and slicing, shredding and dicing, until the sea was filled with tiny pieces of swirling seaweed. Wow, that was pretty useful. Octopus was finally free. Thank you, Nipper. You're a clever crab, he cheered. Nipper waved his claws happily. At last, he knew how useful they could be. All right, guys. All right. Um... Okay, guys, so next, I think I have, I have some questions for you, okay? So this one's kind of hard, but the main characters in this book were a crab and an octopus. Do crabs have tails? Yes or no? 
Actually, and I know it's hard, crabs do have tails. They have very short little tails tucked under their bodies. You have to turn them over to see it. Don't recommend doing that, though. It's probably not very enjoyable for the crab. But maybe (laughs) if you go to an aquarium, you can see a crab's belly or something like that. So can anyone tell me what do crabs eat? You can either um, raise your hand and we'll unmute you or you can type it into the chat. Do you know what they eat? Hmm, you don't know? Okay. Oh, Waylon might have an answer, Miss Olivia. Can you unmute him? You have to unmute. Oh, you, if you'll unmute yourself, Waylon, you can tell us. You have to hit your unmute button. What do you Hold think crabs eat? Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, I think they eat plankton or is that another fish? Let's let's see. All right. Uh Will, do you have an answer? Do you want to try? Algae. Algae? That might be a good good guess. Okay. Do you want to know the answer? You're both right. Um <laughs> crabs are omnivores, just like people, which means they eat everything available to them in their biome. So they eat plants and um algae and um Fungi and worms and mollusks and mollusks and little animals plankton. such as plankton. Yeah. Yep. So pretty good. Um, you guys did a pretty good job. Okay. Next question. Do octo- octopuses have tails? Yes or no? Do you know? Thumbs up for yes, thumbs down for no. All right, this one wasn't a trick. Octopuses don't have tails, but they do have eight legs and three hearts. So I think they make up for it, right? (laughs) So does anyone know what an octopus would eat? If you know, you can raise your hand and we'll unmute you. If not, then we'll just wait. Um, Miss Gwen has a guess, it looks like. Fish. Fish, that's a good guess. All right. And then what do you think, Mr. Whalen? Um, they could eat like crab, like little animals. <laughs> that's that's an even better guess. All right. So yes. Um an octopus would eat um crustaceans is their favorite. I imagine they do eat fish too sometimes, but they like shellfish. So crabs, lobsters, crawfish, and shrimp. Um, are their favorite things to eat. And they're they're pretty smart too. All right. So I think up next, Miss Leslie has another quick Dewey says for us. So let me go here. Hope you skip the thing. There we go. Hello. To learn more about crabs, visit 595.3. To learn more about octopuses, go to 594.56. And to learn more about jellyfish, which is this week's craft, go to 593.5. All right. Okay. So we now have four books that we'd like to share with you. These are all nonfiction. So when you come into the library, if you're interested in these, we will show you how to use our nonfiction section. Mm -hmm. The first one is Bill Nye's The Science Guy's Big Blue Ocean. There are 12 killer experiments inside, and there's additional writing by Ian Saunders, and it's illustrated by John Dykes, Mm -hmm. and it is published by Hypernon Paperbacks for Children. The next one is the Coral Reef one, and it is written by Paul Flesher and published by Benchmark Books. Mm -hmm. The third one is... Real quick, oh, oh, we have a special secret code. <laughs> secret code is jellyfish with a capital J. Be sure that you have a capital letter at the beginning of jellyfish. We told you we would hide it in different places during our program. So this one snuck up on me. I'm as <laughs> surprised as you all are. <laughs> all right. Okay. Then we have Where is the Great Barrier Reef? It's written by Nico Medina illustrated by John Hinderleader and published by Grosset and Dunlop, an imprint of Penguin Random Books. And this was my favorite one that I read. It is Bubble Homes and Fish 
Farts, written by Fiona Bade Rock, illustrated by Carolyn Conahan, and published by Charles Bridge. And in it, it has all kinds of the different things. There are some uh, um, animals, creatures that actually live in bubbles in water. And there are some ways that they communicate with each other. So this was a very interesting book. So we <laughs> hope you come and check all of those out. All right. Okay. Uh, and here we go. This is our craft for the week. Hopefully you've already picked it up and was able to do, um, do this particular craft. It's a paper plate and it's a jellyfish. And so we hope that you enjoyed that. So on the instruction sheet with that particular craft, there is, so she can see it. Miss Toby's going to help me with right. this. I am. Okay. Yes. Oh, look. Waylon has, we oh, have Waylon has this. Good job, Waylon. Hang it up again so <laughs> show it so we can see it. Oh, that was good. Thank you for sharing with us. If you have your craft kit and you've not done it yet, this is the experiment we're going to tell you about. We're going to show you how to set it up, but we're not going to do the whole thing because we don't have a big jug of water. But yes. what you will do. And is, it will be interesting to see if the ones that it, of you that are at the beach, I don't know if you can find a bread loaf of bread wrapper or a rubber band, but it would be interesting for you all to walk out into the ocean and try to put this underwater to see what happens. Mm -hmm. So you'll need the help to do this. So I'm going to put the bread bag on my arm. I'm going to stretch out the rubber band and I'm going to take it and do it way up there. Yes. Like that. And so there's a little bit of air in this. So when you put it in, in your kitchen sink, if you fill it halfway with water, try to put your arm underneath the water and when you all get back from the beach, if you will have an opportunity to do this at the beach, let us know what happens in all that salt water down there. Give it a try and yes. see. Um, because water has a special property called pressure. So you may not know it, but our atmosphere, our regular air, puts pressure on all of us. Well, the pressure underwater is a little bit heavier and more intense. So you'll see the difference there with the bread bag. Okay, um, so it looks like we are approaching the end of our program today. We hope you guys really enjoyed. If you are on vacation, such as our friends that are joining us from the beach, and you have missed getting a craft kit, be sure the next time you're in, just let us know that you missed a week because we do have some extras right now. Yes. So we can get them for you. So next time you're in, just let us know how many you missed and we can catch you right back up, okay? And if you've already got yours, good job. Reminder that you can start picking up craft kits for next week tomorrow and you can get them all the way through until we run out of them. Um, we also want to remind you guys to, um, you know, just make sure you're keeping a reading, you're logging all those books online so you can get all those points for the wall of prizes. And remember our two books from today. Yes, and remember to log our two books from today. Um, make sure I'm going to add the secret code to the chat so that you guys can copy and paste it if you need to. So just go ahead and you can copy capital that to your It is actually capital J. Okay. Okay. Um, and then <laughs> make, sure, <laughs> and make sure that you guys um, do that for us. And then um, also uh, remember next week, same time for um, school age programs. If you have younger brothers and sisters, we have early literacy on at 11 o'clock on Thursdays. And if you have older brothers and sisters and they want to come to the teen program, that is Wednesdays at 4 30. Yes, and our we have a special visitor for that. We do. Day. We have we have a special visitor every week for the team program. It's very exciting. Yes. All right. So um anyway, we hope you guys have a great time. We're gonna do our closing song and then we're going to of course follow it with our library cheer. Are you guys ready? We're gonna leave everybody muted, do our closing song and sing together. Miss Olivia. The more we read together, 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 the more we read together, the happier we'll be. For your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we read together, the happier we'll be. Bye. 
All right, I'm gonna mute everybody and then we're going to do the library chair all together. Unmute yourself if you haven't already. Okay. All right. Are you guys ready? One, two, three. Library! Yay! Thanks for being with us. We enjoyed having you with us and all the answers that you gave and showing us your craft. We really enjoyed that. So bye, everybody. Have a good See time. you next week.